Smart homes are supposed to be smart. They're supposed to automatically do things when we enter a room or when we leave a room or when we get home or when we leave home. Unfortunately, we're not quite there yet. We need something to control our smart home with in some cases, and that's a dashboard. You see me do a few other dashboard videos. And so today I'm gonna to continue with the dashboard that's my daily driver. I've made a few tweaks, I've added a couple of things here and there, and I'm gonna show you what I've changed based on new things that have happened in Home Assistant. So let's get started. So Home Assistant released their year-end roadmap uh, update, and in that they talk about a lot of things, and one of them's dashboards. So they talk about some of the things they've done this year in dashboards, and recently they released the sections view layout in, in uh, 2024.11 version of Home Assistant. They're making that the default dashboard. So creating dash dashboards in general has been made easier by using the, uh, the sections layout. And I showed you that in a couple of the other videos in which I use these sections layouts to build the dashboards. Uh, in addition to that, they are making them more useful and relevant. And that's kind of where the theme is for my dashboard now. Uh, we can go ahead and look at the dashboard as it stands today. This is my daily driver dashboard. These are not all of the entities that are in my dashboard, but because we have visibility settings on sections and on individual cards, I'm able to hide things unless I actually need to see them. We'll talk about that here in just a second. This is the view of the dashboard in just normal view mode, non-editing mode. If I go and edit the dashboard, you're gonna see what I'm talking about with all of the entities that I have in here. Most of this stuff is hidden unless I absolutely need it to be displayed. And that's what makes this nice. You can use those visibility settings to, to declutter your dashboard and make all this go away, unless it's important that something be on your dashboard to notify you of an action, an event, or whatever. And I use a lot of things like the, the locks and whatnot to only display when they're unlocked, uh, monitors over here to display when something is down. And we'll talk about the monitor stuff in a minute. But I just wanna show you, look, this is uh, the entire dashboard uh, without any kind of filtering. And this is what the dashboard looks like um, on a normal basis when everything's hidden unless the visibility conditions are right and then it displays it on the dashboard. So let's talk about the four or five things that I've added to the dashboard since the last update that makes it a little bit better and a little bit more informative. And the first thing was gonna be the sections heading. Now you don't see anything uh, on any of these title or section heading areas of any of these sections because it's all hidden currently. But if I go back into edit mode, you're gonna see what I'm talking about. Let's look at the outside, for example. If I blow this up here, you can now see that I have this section right here that has some additional entities. And this is a new feature they added to Home Assistant recently, uh, 2024.10 maybe I think it was. But if you click on the edit button for this here, you're gonna see that you have the ability to set the title of the heading. You can change the icon of the heading, but you can also add entities. And so I've added four different entities. I've got precipitation today, the rate, how much lightning we've had, and then what the actual feels like temperature is outside. All of these are hidden unless a certain criteria is met. And that's one of the, the nice things about this. You can actually treat these entities on the heading or the section heading, just like you treat them uh, a regular entity in terms of visibility and whatnot. So for example, if I edit this one right here and I look at visibility, you're gonna see that I have a precipitation rate if it's below, uh, if it's above zero, I'm sorry, if it's above zero, then it will display on there. Anything that causes these to go outside of the visibility is gonna be something that shows the uh, device or shows it on the card here. Now, if I just take one of these, let's say we take the, the visibility or the um, feels like temperature, let's just switch it to on, make it backwards. Now I've saved that. If I go ahead and get out of the dashboard view, if I come down here to the outside, you'll see that this thing now shows up on the heading of that particular section. So it gives you the ability to add whatever you want entity-wise as a quick display on the heading part of a section. All right, the next thing I wanna talk about are these cards right here. These are the mini graph cards. And these cards uh, display uh, my temperature and my humidity in a nice little graph. And it's also customized based on the temperature outside. If we go into edit mode for these, you can also see that these um, 
are in a, what I call a, or in a grid card. And the reason for that is, is not every card in a dashboard or in this section's dashboard actually conforms to the, the layout to the, um, fits into where the layout can be set through the, the interface, the UI. So if I look at this one, for example, I can set the layout to be wide and uh, long or whatever, or I can just leave it at that. However, these right here, if I add a mini graph card, and I'll just do it real quick. Let's say we want to add a mini graph card. Now I do entities. Let's just, I'm going to pick some random thing here, right? So there's a uh, mini graph card and you can customize it and everything else. If I save this now and you look down here, here it is on in the section. If I edit it now, you'll notice that it says a visual editor is not available for this type of element. So I have no way to set, at least from a UI, no way to set the, uh, the mini graph card. So it's going to be full width. Now you do have the ability to actually in the code here, the YAML set out the layout options and I can set the grid columns. This is essentially what the other thing does too. And the, the uh, row columns or grid rows, let's say one. First of all, you'll see it's overlapping here. Now I'll say this. Now if I go over here and I move this card and you can kind of stay here. If I move this card up here, it's now hidden behind something else. So it's, it doesn't flow the way it needs to. Now you can come in here, you can edit it. You can make this grid row, let's say four. And now it doesn't actually overlap the card below it, but look at the amount of space it leaves. And let's try three. Yeah, so three works, but see, it still leaves all that white space versus this down here where it's nice and compact. So what you wanna do, or what I've done, instead of doing that, um, and what I have to do is wait for the mini graph card author to make it compatible with this sections view. That's what I mean by not all cards are compatible. You can shoehorn them in here, but it's going to be a little more challenging and it won't line up just right. I put these inside a grid card. So now they're actually inside of a grid card and I've added each one and the grid card actually allows you to set the layout. I mean, I could squeeze that grid card down here. I can make it full width. Uh, as well, but it'll, it does fit in here properly. So that's what I did. I used the grid card. So this is one, uh, one more item I've added on here. And yes, there is a sensor card as well that you can set and it does follow along with the, uh, sections views, but the sensor card doesn't allow you to customize some of the stuff like the colors. It doesn't allow you to customize font size size. And the mini graph card has a lot more functionality and customization to it. That's why I chose this card and I'm using it for my temperature and my humidity settings. Next up on the new things is the Winrose card, which you can see right here. This card here is also very customizable. And let me just show you the YAML that I'm currently using for this. And by the way, all of this information is also on my blog post that, com that a company that's also associated with this video. Uh, it'll be linked down below. You can look that up. But if you look at this Winrose card and you look at the YAML, this is another one that is not available to be configured in the UI. It has to be configured in YAML. There are a lot of settings here and I've customized this Winrose card. If you look at the examples on the Winrose card GitHub page, you can see some of the options they've got here. Here they've got both speed and gust. So there's an option to add multiple wind entities to the card and then it'll display on here as well. Uh, this is just a um, flipped, like a non-dark mode version of the same thing. But you can see here that you get under gust, you get the amount of, or the percentage of time, uh, time it's, or the percentage, percentage of the values that fit within this particular speed range. And you can even adjust the speed range. So looking at mine here, uh, my speed range is zero to three, three to six, six to 10 and 10 to 18. So right now, most of the wind is in the six to 10 mile per hour range. Uh, I've also added um, this picture. You can see in the background here that you can add a background image. And I do that because the weather station's back here. The house is right here. And it gives me an option or gives me the ability to see which direction the wind is in re relation to where the house is. I mean, yeah, it's north or south. But when I'm sitting here and visualizing it in my head, it's easier to see a picture of the wind rose than it is here. And, you know, you can go to Google Earth or somewhere else and you can take a top-down view of this and overlay that. But there's all the options you can use with this. Uh, it, it just, 
is very, very customizable and it gives you a very good overview of the wind. And finally, the final thing that I've added to this dashboard is a bunch of monitors. And you can see that here. So I use a thing called Uptime Kuma. And if you look at my current device list, this is all the, these are all the devices that I have listed here. And this is a dashboard you can get in, in Uptime Kuma or that displays in Uptime Kuma. However, when I'm looking at my dashboard, I want it to tell me if something is not functioning. And right now you see that there are, there's no monitor stuff here. Going back into edit mode, you can see all of these monitors have been defined as tile cards. These tile cards are what displays something goes down. Also, you'll notice here that this uh, alert section is right over here. And the reason why it doesn't display is if I look at the visibility settings for this whole section, the uptime Kuma actual entire system has to be in a degraded state. And it goes to that, it goes to that degraded state if one of the monitors is down. And when it does that, it actually will display the section. And then the individual cards, tile cards that are affected or that are down will display in the section. So let's say I'm gonna kill off my, um, my Plex server and I'll give it a second here to show up. And you'll notice here right now, there's nothing over here on this side because that particular section is completely hidden. And when it's hidden, everything shifts over in its place. So once something goes down, you'll see the section show up here and it'll show the tile card for the thing or things that went down. All right, so those are three. I said that was the final thing, but there's actually one more thing. Home Assistant's latest release talks about, um, or the 2024.11 release talks about WebRTC. WebRTC is a standard that makes peer-to-peer -peer connection for lower latency audio and video streaming. What they've done is they've made it faster and they've set it as default within Home Assistant. And what that should do is display uh, video and stuff faster on dashboards. And, and in my case, it does. So I thought I'd try it out. And what I'm using here is actually, and you can't see it unless I edit it. I'm using a picture glance card to show off my dashboards or show off the video on a dashboard. Now this again is hidden unless it is triggered. So under visibility, I have a binary sensor on the camera or actually on Frigate in VR. Frigate in VR is what I use for all my cameras. Lots of videos I've made on Frigate in VR. It's an awesome uh, solution for kind of home security stuff. And so I use it and it creates a, an event whenever somebody uh, ends up on the, the porch here in this case. And if it shows detected, then it will actually display this picture glance card. Now the picture glance card is super simple to use. It allows me to select the camera entity, which camera view I can, I want to use. And then some other stuff you can do based on whether you want to, or you, what you want it to do if you touch it. So default more info toggle, navigate all this stuff, right? And it's actually so simple that it's easier to see in YAML. I have the camera view is live. The type is picture glance. This is the camera image that I'm displaying. And if it actually goes to on, which is detected in this case from that binary sensor, then it will display it on my dashboard. With the new WebRTC stuff, whenever that camera has uh, some sort of occupancy, it shows up and starts streaming almost immediately. And that's important. If it was a big delay, uh, you'll notice that on this uh, particular uh, view right here, that if they start walking up here, by the time they get over here, if it hasn't picked it up and displayed it, then I've missed out on all of this activity right here, or I may miss them entirely if someone's walking around over here. So it's important that the WebRTC stuff stream very quickly. And with the new WebRTC stuff they've done in Home Assistant 2024-11 to speed things up, it seems to be working quite well, even on a wireless-based tablet that I display this stuff on. All right, so just a quick rundown of some of the new stuff I've added to my dashboard uh, and give you some, hopefully some inspiration on building out your particular dashboard. Dashboards are a personal preference. You may not like what I've done here. You may have your own ideas and I encourage you to build whatever you want. That's the thing about these dashboards in Home Assistant and the new sections view. You can do whatever you want to the dashboard and they've now made it super easy to do that. And I think it'll continue to get better as more of these 
like mini graph cards and other things are updated to be able to handle the way the layouts work in the new sections view. So that's it for this video. If you have any questions, put those down below in the comments. You can also ask me questions on Discord. Uh, and for those that support me, I really appreciate what you do. For those that watch the video, thank you for that as well. It helps the algorithm, of course, and makes it um, show up better and more people can see it. So with that, we'll see you on the next video.